Greetings to the brethren. And to those who are not the brethren, we would like for you to join us. Guys, I'm excited today. Uh, but before I reveal the secret to my excitement, I would like to read to you from the Word of God. And where I'm going to read from today is from 1 Thessalonians, chapter 4, verses 16 and 17. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, and with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Now, guys, some people don't even believe in the rapture. A lot of people who aren't Christians don't believe in it, and even some people who are Christians don't believe in it, and they think it's crazy. I was talking to someone the other day, and they said, you know, I, I believe, you know, I believe in Jesus, but, you know, this whole thing about people just disappearing and being pulled up the air, you know, this person told me that's, that's not even possible, you know, to which you could respond with God, nothing is impossible. And so the rapture, guys, we know it's coming. Don't lose faith. It's coming. It's coming. And I got to say, you know, sometimes I'm, I feel a little bit down at times, but one thing that really cheered me up, can you guess what it is? What could it be? Oh, check this out, baby. What's that? Eben, but that's a an alien spaceship, and it's abducting people. What does that mean? Well, check out what this says. Aliens didn't take us. I did. <laughs> okay, guys, it's difficult to do this, but that's okay, because we got this, baby. Look at this. This is a beautiful blue one. Aliens didn't take us. Boom. I did. And who's that? That is the Lord Jesus. And look at that. 1 Thessalonians 4, verses 16 and 17. So guys, where did I get this amazing t-shirt? I didn't make it myself. Oh no, I don't know how to do that. But you know what? Octavio and Lee made it. The Holy Spirit guided them and they created this t-shirt. And they sent it to me, uh, and now I'm showing it to you guys. So I want to read a little bit about what they said. So you guys may or may not know uh, Sister Lee and Brother Octavio, but I've been talking to them for a while. They're really cool, and they've told me a bit about the story about creating this shirt. And to summarize it simply, the enemy fought them at every stage uh, of creating this. And this is what they said. They said, Lee and I are doing this as a service to our Lord Jesus, and in no matter, profiting a penny from it. The gentleman who is fulfilling the orders is a retired U.S. veteran and fellow brother in Christ, and is selling the shirt at cost. The purpose of the shirt is to educate others as to what is coming, and spread this crucial message to others in a non-threatening manner. And they gave me instructions. If anybody's interested in one of these babies, the website is sealedinchrist.com. And they said, go to the Watchman collection on the upper tabs. Alien message rapture T will be towards the bottom of the page. And they said this, and I wanted to share it. They said, people may make fun of the rapture message now, but when it happens and they find the empty rapture T's in different places, then they will remember and hopefully turn to our Lord Jesus and be saved. In the meantime, let's share the message and go fishing for more souls to enter their names in the book of life and join us in the air when the day comes. Uh, so guys, if anybody wants to talk to Octavio or Lee, I don't know if I should release their contact info here because weird stuff's happening with people getting harassed and it's pretty creepy, but you guys... Uh, I'll put my phone number here so you can contact me. Uh, I can put you in touch with them if you'd like to talk with them. They're super friendly. They're super supportive. Uh, and 
they sent me these rapture tees. Uh, and look, I can be considered a bit eccentric at times, you know, because of what I've been through. I don't really mind just going out there in the streets, just telling people stuff. People aren't exactly like, hey, thanks for telling me about the Lord Jesus and the upcoming rapture. Dude, I've had people say they're going to call the police if I kept talking to them more about Jesus. So look, not everybody is, you know, a little wild as I am in that sense. But the purpose of this rapture t-shirt, what's so cool about this is this can be used as a conversational icebreaker. Because maybe you're a little bit shy. Maybe, you know, you talk to people about Jesus or the rapture and they, they shame you. They give you, you know, whatever it is and it doesn't feel good. Well, the cool thing about this t-shirt is that it gets attention and you can use it as a conversational icebreaker. You can just be out and about in a cafe wherever you're hanging out and maybe the spirit moves you to share this message. And what you can do, this is just one way to do it. You can say, Hey, what do you think of my t-shirt? And right away, people are going to be curious. They're going to want to know a little bit more. You pop in there and you give them the message, however the spirit moves you. You can even do it in kind of a casual way. You don't have to be super intense with it. I've experimented with a lot of ways of doing it, but you can just kind of pop in and, and you could even say something like, yep, well, the alien abduction's coming up, right? You could say that. And they're like, yeah, I heard about aliens, blah, blah. And then you could say, course, the truth behind it is it's not aliens who are going to take us. It's the Lord Jesus. People might have some reaction. Well, that's, you could say, yeah, it's in the Bible. People might say, but, but I heard the word rapture is not even in the Bible. And you, you could say, oh, you know, you're right. I must be crazy. I got to go. You turn around and then you go, oh, wait a minute. What's that? <laughs> you pointed out, hey, check out Thessalonians, baby. People are just, what's going on? You know, you give them a quick gospel message about our Lord Jesus Christ. You say, He's the Alpha and Omega. He died upon a cross for my sins, for your sins, for all of our sins. And he is the only one who can keep us from going to hell for eternity, even though we all crucified him. And all that he asks of us is simply to believe on him. And at that point, whatever people uh, reactions have, of course, make sure to put in that on the third day he rose. And for, uh, and for those who say something like, I don't know if I believe that, uh, you know, there could be a rapture, people just disappearing. You could say, well, do you believe that Jesus Christ, our Lord, was resurrected on the third day? And a lot of people might not, but hey, brothers and sisters in Christ, you know, they they believe that. Or if they don't, <laughs> well, they're not saved. But anyway, the point is you can use these T's to go in. Yeah, be a little funny with it. Just say, hey, just break the ice, get the information across. And then you say, hey, it was a pleasure talking to you. Have a good one. You don't have to deliver the message in any particular way. The key is just get the info in there. They, <laughs> I've got to honestly say, I don't think I've ever had a good reception when I'm sharing the gospel with people. You know, people generally just, you know, it's, they're not exactly excited to hear it. And if you just really deliver it straight up, people even can have a vicious reaction towards you, you know, just saying weird stuff, you know. Uh, but for one, don't worry. The Lord is protecting you. Don't worry. Someone's going to knock you out or hurt you. Dude, I don't worry about that because the Lord is protecting me and he will protect you guys too. But just this little sacrifice that we can do of being shamed a little bit, of having it be awkward, you guys got to realize this is what he's going to do for us. He is going to take us away before the first trumpet sounds. We will be with the Lord in the air forever. You think about what a gift that is. How can you even imagine that as all these things written in the book of Revelation are coming to pass and people can't even take the, the way out of committing suicide because they're held on the earth, that Jesus is going to take us away and we will be with the Lord Jesus instead of having to endure all that's occurring on the earth. And when you think of that, that gift... You know, could you put a price on that gift? You know, imagine if you could be taken in the rapture just by paying a certain amount of money. Would you pay a thousand dollars? Would you pay a million dollars? I mean, dude, and then realize that this gift is the grace of God for keeping the faith, for believing. And then you think we could never pay that gift back with any amount of works or anything. But then you think, you know, well, what if 
even though we know that we could never, we could never deserve it. We could never pay it back whatsoever. But what if we just gave something to God as, to, as a way to say thanks, God? What if we just endured a little awkwardness, you know? People call you names or something. You know what? You just chuckle. You go about your day. Maybe it even makes you feel sad for a while, but then you get over it. And then you you do a little tabulation of score. You're like, so God's going to evacuate me up into the air, and I will be with our Lord and Savior Jesus while people on the earth are enduring something that has never even been seen before that's going to wipe out a quarter of the whole human population. Men will will chase after death, and death will flee from them. Guys, the little previews that God's showing me of this, it's so horrific. And you think, you know, imagine we could calculate, like, how much that's worth. It's like this much. And then imagine that little shame we feel, a tiny bit of mockery, or even someone's, I'll call the police if you talk about Jesus. You just say, okay, Lord, or excuse me, okay, sir, if you, if you want to call the police, you know, you do that. I'm sorry to bother you. Have a good one. And don't forget about Jesus. You just walk away. Guys, these little things that we're enduring are just nothing at all compared to what the Lord is going to do for us. That is what we get just by having faith and believing. Salvation. Boom. We got it just for having the faith to read a book, see it and believe it. From that, we receive salvation like that. You could never pay that back. And now with that free gift of salvation, what are we going to do now? Now you you can just wait till the rapture takes you, you know, and uh, you can do that. Uh, you could just go about your earthly life. But you know what? Why not go about your earthly life just wearing a t-shirt? Or maybe you don't want to get the t-shirt. That's fine. Why not just tell people about the rapture anyway? Just give that little bit for Jesus. Not because it would ever make us deserve the rapture, but just because it would make God happy. Because not only is God going to, not only did he first give us salvation, spare us from hell, die for our sins. That's the first thing he gives just as a free gift. All we had to do to redeem that was just believe it. And it's all written here. We just had to read this book and believe, boom, we have salvation, free gift. And then we find out about the rapture. And God tells us it's coming. It's written in the book of Revelation. He's going to keep us from the hour of trial. Guys, that's the seven-year tribulation. Bam, that's like another thing he's doing for us. And now he's letting us know ahead of time before it hits. When you start to realize all the stuff that God is revealing, doing for us, you know, and then you realize we don't even have to pay God back. God likes a joyous giver. God gives us these things because that's how he is, out of his majestic grace. When I realize this stuff, man, when I contemplate it, I'm like, man, I don't know how much time I have left on the earth. Personally, I think it's very little. Why not use just a little bit of my day to do something for God? Because the thing about the rapture that's so powerful with it is, even within the Christian community, a lot of people don't even believe in it. Even though it's written in the Bible, I guess they don't believe the Bible's literally true. Well, you know, to, to each their own. But do you ever wonder, like, why would God tell us about this before it's coming? You know, I don't claim to know all the reasons, but I think one reason is so God's showing us a way that we could give back, that we could just share this precious information. Because a lot of people on the earth, including a lot of Christians, they are not going to believe in the rapture no matter what we do, no matter how many times we point out that the Bible talks about the rapture, they're just not going to believe. But you know what happens? When the rapture occurs and the seven-year tribulation occurs, well, then they're going to believe. Of course, the problem is then that it's going to be too late for them to go with the rapture. But hey, that's their choice, you know. But the least that we could do as people who are so very blessed and fortunate to know about the upcoming rapture, to know about the literal truth of this, that the book of Revelation is literally saying this is the future. We're so blessed and fortunate to know that information. Why not pay God back just a little bit by just telling some people about it? They're going to think we're crazy. The world's going to think we're crazy. Hey, that's fine. But you know what happens? When our father drops the hammer and the seven-year tribulation begins, they're going to suddenly realize, yeah, and, and the government then says it was aliens, and you can see the government's releasing all that alien stuff now. People are just going to think it's crazy. Look, it's like talking to a wall at times. I try to tell you about it. It's like people just come up with rationalization, rationalization. This can't be true. That's not the future. That's just an ancient book. Weird stuff happens all the time. It's like I see it constantly, but realize what we're doing 
we're doing for the future. They may scoff at us now. They may mock us now, you know, but we just put that little info in and that info is going to help them later because after the rapture occurs and the whole world breaks out in a state, which, hey, just read the book of Revelation, the people are going to, their minds are going to be spinning. They're going to be trying to understand what was this? And suddenly they go back, they turn the TV on, alien, government says aliens have done this. And they remember that one crazy guy or gal who a month before, you know, mentioned something to them about it. And suddenly in their mind, instead of just having the full voice of Satan, obey the government, believe the government, da, 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 which everything's going to be telling them to do, they're going to think, oh my God, someone knew this was coming. Or they were talking about the Bible and Jesus. Then the government's going to say something like the Bible is banned. And they're now in their mind, that's like a little line of hope. That's given them a piece of the truth to cling on to, you know, and that's just the smallest thing that we can do for God to make our father happy, to make our father proud of us. We tell people, you know, you can even say some somebody like, hey, well, I guess we'll see what happens. And remember, do it with love. Do it with good cheer. The gospel is the good news. We share the gospel of Jesus and we mention a little thing about the rapture. Hey, government's going to say it was aliens. You know, you can... You can start the conversation. You have to start with Jesus. You can just be like, dude, aliens are coming, right, bro? People, dude, everyone <laughs> believes in aliens these days. They have all these theories about how it was the this and that. You can kind of sneak in there, you know, right? You're just like, what's up, dude? Alien overlords, am I right? They're like, yeah. And then you're, you can just kind of wind it in like, yeah, well, you know, the aliens are coming. But dude, you ever think they might not be our friends? But they're going to start going on with their theory. And then you just kind of go in, you know, you don't have to right away be like, oh, I believe in Jesus. You have to believe this. No, you just kind of come in. You say, hey, man, I used to think that, too. But then, you know, I, I got into this book, dude. So powerful. What book? It's the Bible, man. What? Right? Because now you're going in smooth. They're starting to think, oh, this is a fellow believer in the, the aliens and this and that. You say, hey, man, I used to, you know, I didn't realize either, man, until I started reading the Bible. People say, oh, well, that. See what I mean? You can kind of like. Go in like non-confrontational, you know, show people what you have in common with them. Dude, I myself did not know any of this stuff before last October, man. I was just in complete darkness, which we all are before we get saved. You can relate to people. Let them know, you know, you don't have to be like, you're a sinner. You need salvation. You can say, man, I, I did a lot of bad things in my life. You list some of them and you're like, you know, and right. You kind of go in, you relate, you connect. And what I know, look, for my years, look, before I was saved, I would go out and pick up women, right? And I learned all these techniques about this and that. It's all pharmacaea, it's sorcery. You don't even want to know about that stuff. But, you know, something I learned from social interactions is that breaking the ice, you know, kind of go in smooth, you know, just talk to people, spread some good cheer. And this right here, man, dude, I would be wearing this constantly. Lee gave me instructions on how to wash it and keep it clean and stuff, which I will do. Uh, and yeah, I showed that this is the short sleeve version. We also got the long sleeve version, but man, well, let's just put it like this. People in my neighborhood thought I was crazy before. Now I'm going to be like, Hey, it's me, baby. I'm back. What's up aliens? Nope. They're the fallen angels. Like the key is you can have fun with it, guys. You can have fun spreading the gospel. It doesn't have to be this like severe thing. You can go in, have a little fun, talk about it. And then you just take it back to the central truth of our Lord's death, burial, and resurrection. Because that right there, that is the gospel. You don't have to read someone the whole Bible. You don't even have to read from the Bible. You can just tell people that Jesus Christ was, he came in the flesh as a man, but he was also fully God. Nobody else was, no one else. He died for my sins, for your sins, for everyone's sins. He died, he bled out upon a cross. And then after three days, he was resurrected. That's the gospel right there. You can share it however you're comfortable saying that. You express that. You hook a little bit of interest with this. And, you know, we just got to go forward with this, man. We've been given such a gift, such a gift, gift on top of gift on top of gift. We literally have knowledge of the future. Like, think about that. Just think about that. And then think, did God just give us that just because he's just, hey, here's about the future. Hey, you can take it that way if that's how you believe it. But what I've seen with the Lord time and time again is when he gives you this information, when he gives you things, it's because he wants you to do something with it, you know? And personally, I believe that, look, it's simple. What does God want? What does Jesus Christ want? 
He wants as many souls in heaven as possible. He doesn't want a single soul to spend eternity separated from God. That's his will. That's our Father's will. And so, what makes our Father happier than anything? I believe when we go out, we spread the gospel, even if it's weird, even if it's embarrassing, we just do the best that we can. And even if it doesn't seem to work, you know, it's probably not going to seem to work. I can tell you that from my own experience. There's never a moment when I shared the gospel, people are like, hey, you're right. I think Jesus was God also. No, it's like, it ranges from people just think you're totally crazy and laugh to people get weird. It's, it's strange. But you know what? In all the times I've done it, nothing bad has happened to me other than people having a weird reaction. You know what? You turn around, come home, read the Bible. It's like, Satan operates via fear. He wants you to be like, oh, if you share the gospel, oh, it's so scary. But I can tell you, like, really nothing happens. You share the gospel, you, you come back. It's like that fear is keeping us from doing the will of God. And what's the will of God for us to spread the gospel? And why do we even know about the rapture before it occurs? We even know about the deception they're going to use with aliens. Now, everybody thinks that we're crazy, or a lot of people do. Even within the church, people think we're nuts. They don't believe in the rapture or something or other. You know, that's fine. Let people believe it. But let's go out there and let's just share the gospel a little bit. Let's just just try, just experiment, just keep doing it. Because think about this. If you went out there and you you did this, maybe, maybe you have time to do it five times before the rapture. Like, look, we don't know when the rapture is going to occur with any precision, but my personal view is very soon. We have very little time. But imagine that you work up the courage to go out there and just share this message with five people. And all five of them have a weird reaction. They think you're crazy, you know. But now imagine the rapture occurs. We're up there in heaven with Jesus. And imagine one of those five people walks over to you and they say to you, you know, when you talked to me on the street that day, I thought you were just a nutball and I forgot about it. And then when World War III broke out and the people disappeared and I saw what the government was saying on TV, I just kept thinking back to what you had said. And I went through great tribulation, but I believed I didn't take the mark of the beast. And as a result, I made it here to heaven. Can you guys even imagine the joy that you would feel how happy that would make the Lord? We don't know. We don't know who our words are going to save. We can't see that right now. We got to go forward with faith. We got to go forward with faith. You know, maybe you preach the gospel to a hundred people and none of them get saved. Well, you know what? You can sleep easier at night knowing that you did what you could. And maybe, dude, maybe you preach the gospel to a hundred people. 99 of them don't get saved and end up going to hell but one of them gets saved. And then while they're here in the seven year tribulation, they go out, talk to other people. That leads to two more people get saved. It could just spread, spread exponentially, all because you have the courage to just say that, to just do it. And then you look back at the, the flack you took, you know, it, people send me weird comments. I get weird flack, but at the end of the day, what is it? It's just comments on YouTube. It's just weird messages. People do strange things. At the end of the day, what is it, dude? It's like nothing, you know, has any of it really harmed me in any real tangible way? Yeah, it makes me sad sometimes, but you know what? Do you know how happy I'm going to be being with the Lord for eternity? How happy you guys are going to be? What the Lord's asking of us is like nothing in comparison with what he's given us. He just gives so much. He's so gracious. So I really hope that you guys just go out there, talk about the rapture. If you want to grab one of these teas, baby, grab the tea. Dude, I might even make a video of me going out with the tea, talking to people and just doing it like funny style, try it around, just spread the information. We can't control how the information is received. We can't control ultimately whether that person gets salvation or not. They got to make a, a decision, you know, but what we can do is our little tiny part to win souls for the kingdom of our Lord. And the little actions we make, man, it's like the butterfly flapping its wings. You never know. And if you go out there and you talk to people about the gospel, everyone just mocks you. You come home, you're like, I don't know if it worked. People say you're crazy and stuff. Well, 
you know what? I actually really like those days when I just do a lot. I give a lot for God and then I'm beaten down and people are saying I'm insane and weird stuff's happening. You know what? On those days I go to bed, I'm like, man, I gave what I had to give for the Lord, <laughs> you know? And just in case anyone needs to remind he died on a cross for us. He had nails pounded through his hands. He was shamed by the whole world when all he had done was come to earth to save all of us. He died on a cross, you know? And if he did that for us, then why don't we pick up our cross in whatever way we can? If you're not into talking to other people about the gospel, well, you can pray, you know? You can read the Bible. You can, you know, just do something for the Lord. Just try, man. Just try and do something. And whether or not it seems to work, you know, you rest easy knowing that what you did was for the Lord. This is not for ourselves, you know? Guys, if we were doing stuff for ourselves, would we come up with this scenario? <laughs> like, I'm going to go out and tell people stuff that seems insane and get mocked and shamed by everyone and then other people will mock me. And it's it's like, you know, guys, if I was coming up with like a, a cool thing to do, I wouldn't come up with this. I didn't come up with this. It's reality. It's the reality which our Lord Jesus Christ has revealed to us. And you know what? Our salvation is not going to be taken away. We believe on Jesus. We have that salvation. But now we have free will. And I'm here to tell you that every little decision we make counts. Every little thing. And as much as it might be difficult or hard, you know what? It's also an adventure. Dude, it's such an adventure. Man, since I was reborn, do you think I could have imagined all this stuff happening with the Lord? He gave me a ministry, dude. I didn't even know, I, I, I didn't even know there were like ministries on YouTube. I didn't know it was called that. It's like, bam, then there was a prophecy. Bam, now there's this. Dude, now I'm wearing an alien abduction rapture t-shirt going out talking to people. And every time, my faith quavers at times. I, I think, am I going crazy? This, that, dude. When my faith quavers, you know what I do? I pick up this book. And I read this book and I read those sentences written in it. And I know that is the word of God. It is going to pass. Everything written in this book will come to pass. You know, Derek, uh, Derek Prince made a really good point. He said, do you know that in the Bible, for every prophecy about Jesus's first coming, there are it's either four or five about his second coming. Jesus will return. Do you believe in this book? Do you believe Jesus came the first time? Well, the Bible has four to five times as much to say about the return of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I believe that return is extremely imminent. So you do you. If you guys aren't into talking about the rapture or whatever, okay, that's fine. You don't have to do it, you know, but why not err on the side of just doing something to make the Lord happy? And I believe that with all that we can see about the coming deception about the things that are written in this book that are already coming to pass. All these harbingers of the book of Revelation. Dude, I just saw today J.P. Morgan came out with a, a payment scanner that scans your face or the palm of your hand. I'm not even kidding. I'll post that in the description too. Hey guys, what does that sound like? Hey, the central bank digital currency. And it, it mentioned how all the top payment processors like Amazon are all competing for this new contactless scanner. It scans your face or your hand. Yeah, is, isn't that interesting? Doesn't that sound familiar? Guys, this right here is reality. This is going to happen. There are so many signs of it. You, you could just read it and believe that it's true. That's really the most obvious sign. But if you, if you need a little help, dude, just look at what's happening in the world. Government's telling everyone about aliens. Wow, they're like releasing it all. Isn't that strange? Why would all the governments be telling people about aliens? Why can you look at videos of alien ships flying around Jerusalem? Guys, maybe it's all crazy, or maybe it's the truth. And this knowledge, you know what the Lord told me after that, the whole nuclear prophecy thing? He told me that I should give thanks for this mighty knowledge which had been revealed. And that's what I did, and that's what I still do. And I say to you guys, you know, with, with great, oh, I can't remember the quote, you know, with great benefit comes great responsibility. Guys, I'm feeling that responsibility. I am feeling that responsibility because the Lord has given so much so graciously to me, to all of you. Let's just give back to the Lord and make our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, happy because he is up there. He is seeing me make this video. He's seeing you guys watch this video. 
And what I've learned about the Lord is he sees all of our choices. He doesn't expect us to do any things that we can't do. He knows our capacities better than we do. He sees all of our moral choices. And I don't want anyone to get scared that if you don't go out and preach the gospel, he's going to harm you or something. No, he won't. Your salvation's intact. But realize that we are going to meet the Lord face to face. We are going to see him. He is going to look at us with his beaming eyes of truth. And suddenly we're going to look back on our lives in that moment and realize that a lot of our concerns were petty. You know, we might even wish when we see him, oh man, I wish I had told just a few more people about the gospel. Because that could be the one and only thing that we can take with us to heaven is other souls. That's all there is. That's why we don't stack up resources upon the earth. We have been given something so much more precious. Not only the free gift of salvation, but knowledge of the future. We can see what is coming, and they can't. And they're going to mock us. They're going to do all that. But you know what? What did Jesus Christ, our great Lord, do? Even as they crucified him, forgive them, Lord, they know not what they do. Even as he was dying to the thief that believed, he told him, you will be with me tonight in paradise. That was the character of our great Lord Jesus. He just gave everything he had. Now, we're never going to reach that level because he was God, okay? So we don't have to be like, oh, I haven't reached that level. I feel bad or, you know, <laughs> if Jesus is here, I know all my efforts like somewhere here. But why not go from like here to like here? You can do that. So, okay, guys. Well, I really wanted to introduce the rapture tease. Dude, I'm psyched about this. I'm going to be wearing the other one in some upcoming videos because right now, man, let's just go forward. Let's finish the race strong. We have been given so much. It's more than our minds can comprehend. You know what? Let's go out and let's give to everyone. Friends, foe. Ah, there's no distinction. God wants all their souls in heaven, whether they're saved, whether they're not saved. Let's just give. Because you know what? It's also a lot of fun. <laughs> okay, guys. Well, I have a lot of sermons too. Dude, I have like a lot of stuff stacked up. So I'll be with you guys again shortly. I just wanted to announce uh, the Rapture Tea thing. I'll put the link in the description. It is sealedinchrist.com. I'll put it in the description. Uh, and if you guys want to know more about the Rapture Teas or talk to Octavia or Lee or something, just hit me up. I'll put my phone number in there as well. So, uh, oh, and also uh, they wanted to say that they wish all a blessed weekend. Okay, everybody, uh, I will speak to you again soon. And may our Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth continue to bless and protect each and every one of you. Talk to y'all soon. Amen.